Good morning. Welcome to another edition of Walking with Jesus Through the Word, one chapter per day. I'm Pastor Jason Van Bemmel from Forest Hill Presbyterian Church. Good to be with you for our 26th day of Walking with Jesus Through the Word together. And we are in Genesis chapter 17. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your love for us. We thank you for your faithfulness to us. We thank you for your word that is true, eternally fixed in the heavens. We thank you for how your written word reveals to us the incarnate word, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. We pray that you would write your written word on our hearts and that you would deepen our faith and trust in Christ the word, through the word, this morning. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Genesis chapter 17 in the ESV. This is our passage for today. When Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abram and said to him, I am God Almighty. Walk before me and be blameless, that I may make my covenant between you, between me and you, and may multiply you greatly. Then Abram fell on his face, and God said to him, Behold, my covenant is with you, and you shall be the father of a multitude of nations. No longer shall your name be called Abram, but your name shall be Abraham, for I have made you the father of a multitude of nations. I will make you exceedingly fruitful, and I will make you into nations, and kings shall come from you. And I will establish my covenant between me and you and your offspring after you throughout their generations for an everlasting covenant to be God to you and to your offspring after you. And I will give to you and to your offspring after you the land of your sojournings, all the land of Canaan, for an everlasting possession, and I will be their God. And God said to Abraham, As for you... You shall keep my covenant, you and your offspring after you throughout their generations. This is my covenant, which you shall keep between me and you and your offspring after you. Every male among you shall be circumcised. You shall be circumcised in the flesh of your foreskins, and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and you. He who is eight days old among you shall be circumcised. Every male throughout your generations, whether born in your house or bought with your money from any foreigner who is not your offspring, both he who is born in your house and he who is bought with your money shall surely be circumcised. So shall my covenant be in your flesh for an everlasting covenant. Any uncircumcised male who is not circumcised in the flesh of his foreskin shall be cut off from his people. He has broken my covenant. And God said to Abraham, As for Sarai, your wife, you shall not call her name Sarai, but Sarah shall be her name. I will bless her, and moreover I will give you a son by her. I will bless her, and she shall become nations. Kings of people shall come from her. Then Abraham fell on his face and laughed and said to himself, Shall a child be born to a man who is a hundred years old? Shall Sarah, who is ninety years old, bear a child? And Abraham said to God, Oh, that Ishmael might live before you. God said, No. But Sarah, your wife, shall bear you a son, and you shall call his name Isaac. I will establish my covenant with him as an everlasting covenant for his offspring after him. As for Ishmael, I have heard you. Behold, I have blessed him and will make him fruitful and multiply him greatly. He shall father twelve princes, and I will make him into a great nation. But I will establish my covenant with Isaac, whom Sarah shall bear to you at this time next year. When he had finished talking with him, God went up from Abraham. Then Abraham took Ishmael his son, and all those born in his house or bought with his money, every male among the men of Abraham's house, And he circumcised the flesh of their foreskins that very day, as God had said to him. Abraham was ninety-nine years old when he was circumcised in the flesh of his foreskin. 
And Ishmael, his son, was 13 years old when he was circumcised in the flesh of his foreskin. That very day, Abraham and his son Ishmael were circumcised, and all the men of his house, those born in the house and those born with money from a foreigner, were circumcised with him. Amen. Thus far, God's word for today. Genesis chapter 17 is really the second great covenant chapter of God making his covenant with Abraham. And we really need to see it uh, as a pair with Genesis 15. And then, of course, in between, you have the the disobedience and faithlessness of Abraham in uh, the incident with Hagar and, and having Ishmael. But in Genesis 15, you have the grace of God and God taking upon himself this self-imprecatory oath that says, I will surely keep my covenant promise to you. And if anything should fail of my covenant promise to you, I will be, I will be torn and bloodied, even as these animals are torn and bloodied. Now, God's people broke the covenant relationship with God. The Israelites were unfaithful. They were kicked out of the land. They were disciplined. They were judged. But God kept his covenant promise even by being torn on the cross, bloodied and ripped open for the sin of his people to make the covenant right and whole again. Here, Abraham is taking upon himself and the males of his household the self-imprecatory oath in the form of circumcision. Circumcision is a bloody cutting, just like the covenant in chapter 15 was a bloody cutting. It's a cutting off. So just as the foreskin is cut off and thrown away, there, there's a threat here that if you are unfaithful, you will be cut off and discarded. And notice the requirement of the covenant on behalf of Abraham. God says, I am God Almighty. Walk before me and be blameless, that I may make my covenant between me and you and may multiply you greatly. Abraham is required on his part to walk before God and be blameless. Why? Because God is holy, holy, holy. And he can't be in covenant relationship with people who are defiled and sinners and wicked. We immediately have a problem here in this covenantal rite of circumcision because Abraham is not blameless. And none of Abraham's descendants are going to be blameless until one comes who is. One comes who is both the son of God and the son of Abraham. And he actually takes upon himself not only the self-imprecatory oath that God makes in Genesis 15, but he also takes upon himself the self-imprecatory oath that Abraham makes in Genesis 17. As he is bloodied and cut off, it's outside of the city walls, outside of the gate, and he is cut off from fellowship with his father as he cries out on the cross, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? This is Jesus as one who is true God and true man in his dual nature as God man, taking upon himself as son of God, son of Abraham, taking upon himself the full weight of the covenant curse, both the part that God had taken in Genesis 15 and the part that the sons of Abraham take in Genesis 17. And that's why Circumcision can be an everlasting covenant and yet is not still performed in that way among God's people today because it was fulfilled in Christ when Christ was cut off for us. Isaiah 53 uses this language when it talks about the death of Christ. Who considered that it was for the transgression of my people that he was cut off? It's that same language of being cut off. And so Jesus was cut off for the sins of his people. And once that sign, the bloody sign of circumcision was fulfilled, once the full weight of the self-imprecatory oath had been taken by Jesus, he drank the cup of wrath of God down to the bottom. Now the sign of circumcision is transformed into a bloodless sign of, of cleansing and of union with Christ, who is the fulfillment of the covenant of circumcision. So it's still an everlasting sign. It's still administered to God's people, but it's done so in the waters of baptism now. In baptism, we are symbolically united to Christ 
as a picture of what we need. Because Christ took the wrath of God upon himself, we need to be united to Christ. And when we are united to Christ, we get the benefits of his shed blood on the cross to cleanse us from all sin. So we baptize today. And just as Abraham and all of his household were circumcised, even Ishmael, even as God is telling him, Ishmael is not the child of promise. I will not keep my covenant promise through Ishmael. Ishmael is still circumcised. Why? Because he's part of Abraham's household, along with all the men who were not even natural descendants of Abraham, but were servants or slaves. They were all circumcised because they're all part of his household. And that's how God administers the covenant. He, he enters into covenant relationship with families and households. And he promises to be our God and the God of our children, which is what he's been promising Abraham. And so we baptize households. We baptize believers and their children. We baptize families because they are together in covenant relationship with God. It's not a guarantee of salvation. Just as Ishmael wasn't saved, many of the men in Abraham's household were not saved, but they were still under God's covenant. They were still under the promise until such time as they might decide to reject that promise and walk away from it. So Christ is the fulfillment of all of the promises of God. He's also the fulfillment of all of these self-imprecatory oaths as he was bloodied and cut off for us and for our salvation. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the precious gift of your son, Jesus Christ, who volunteered to be cut off for us in a way that we cannot even begin to understand the weight of the wrath that he bore for us and for our salvation. We thank you for Jesus, who did walk before you and was blameless. He was the perfect and sinless and holy son of God and son of Abraham. And then he took upon himself the curse that we deserve. We thank you and praise you for Jesus. It's in his name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, we're going to continue in the book of Genesis tomorrow. We'll be in Genesis 18. I hope you can join us for that. Have a blessed day in the Lord.